MSI Afterburner can be a great way of unlocking a few extra FPS from your probably GPU bottleneck system. But there's always one question burning in the back of people's minds while using it to overclock. Can this hurt my GPU? Well, no. Right out of the box, MSI Afterburner locks out the voltage slider, so you can't even touch it. But then when you check that little box and enable the voltage slider, it shows a percentage up at the top, and you'd think that sliding it to 100% would effectively double the voltage sending to the core. It's not though, that voltage slider up at the top is just multiplying off of the boost voltage. So say you have it running at one volt and it boosts up to 1.05 volts, you might see an extra 0.05 volts, but that is it. Below that you have your power limit slider. That's the best way of making the card more stable, is just by throwing more wattage at the problem. Below that you have your temperature limit, and that's where things start getting kind of sketchy, because any good card made in the last 10 years has thermal protection. So if you start getting up into an unsafe temperature, it will just start throttling the card, regardless of what you set all the other settings at. It's going to start throttling because it wants to protect itself. And ultimately, if it gets up into an unsafe temperature, it will just turn itself off. And last but definitely not least, you have your graphics core multiplier and your RAM speed multiplier. Now these two things are the two most important ways of getting more performance out of your card because obviously if you wanted to you could just max those sliders but it'll just crash because the, the speeds that you can max it at are much higher than what the card can actually run at. So you're just gradually upping them until you start getting into some instability and instability is not going to hurt your card, it's just going to start running poorly and throwing errors out. And when you're just throwing errors out like that, the card's not going to run good. You don't want to run it at those speeds anyway, so just dial it back and you're fine. Memory, obviously, when you start running memory speed up kind of high, you'll start seeing some artifacting. Again, it's not hurting the card, it's just software malfunctioning because it's running through the hardware too fast and the hardware can't keep up with the speed that you're running it at. But that grayed out locked up voltage multiplier is really the last thing that you should be worried about. I think it's really just a byproduct of a bygone era where you could actually get full control out of your voltage multipliers, but nowadays you really can't. Unless you have a crazy modded BIOS that will let you kill your core. But straight out of the box, most of these GPUs do not come with super high unlocked voltage multipliers. Like, the worst case scenario would be trying to do this with a Kingpin card, but that's a very specific card and people who own that card should know not to do anything crazy with it unless you have it under LN2. Should and probably are completely different words in this case because if you have a Kingpin card, you don't always know what you're doing. So ignore me if you have a Kingpin card or an otherwise completely unlocked GPU. I'm talking about the average man's GPU that you go to buy, Best Buy and buy and then slap in your PC and then it's 10 years down the road, we have a GPU crisis, and you just want to get a little bit more frames out of it. But yeah, I answered your question. It's not going to hurt anything. You can click off the video now. Nothing to see here. So if you're still watching, I'm going to try and kill one of my precious GPUs today. I have three GPUs I will go with today. I have a 1070 Ti, a NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti with a modded BIOS and then a Radeon 5700 XT that does not have a modded BIOS. This, this is just a, a prop because I love it too much to ever try to hurt it. So let's fire up the system here with the 1070 Ti. So let's go ahead and fire up MSI Afterburner. So immediately when you fire up MSI Afterburner, the core voltage multiplier will be completely locked. So if you go to the settings and unlock that, it will ask you to restart. And when it restarts, you'll have a core voltage multiplier. But if you slide it to 100% and just hit that check mark, it won't actually do anything unless you're running a benchmark. So let's go ahead and just fire up a simple benchmark that runs in the background. So as you can see, we're throwing a whole, just check mark that, we're throwing a whole 1100 millivolts at this thing, and it's fine. The key here is that percentage number is completely fake. If I take it down to zero, it only drops 30 millivolts. Like the percentage slider on MSI Afterburner is 
complete load of crap because not even MSI knows what the card knows to multiply off of. It, it's very bizarre and kind of misleading because, you know, most people would see that 100% and they'd think, I don't want to throw double at my card, that seems super dangerous, but it doesn't actually do anything. On a side note, if you hit it at zero and you go to like, say, 210, it doesn't really make your overclock any more stable. Like, I'm pretty sure this card becomes unstable at uh, 220 added megahertz. So yeah, we're back here again at 230. It doesn't make the overclock any more stable. Like, I don't know if it's just this card specifically, but playing with the core voltage multiplier doesn't really have that big of an effect. Like a few megahertz is not a big deal. So having it on this card almost feels completely pointless. In fact, I wanna try something. I wanna switch this from the lower power BIOS to the higher power BIOS to see what it lets me do. And by the way, this is a 10850K. There is no way that a 1070 Ti is going to be bottlenecked by that CPU. It's not happening. So by turning on the second VBIOS, we unlocked another 10% power limit. But again, maxing the core voltage multiplier does only so much. It, it's less than 50 millivolts, which is 5% of a volt. Like this is a minuscule amount. I can't imagine a world where touching that multiplier will make your GPU more or less stable, or at least this one. Let's go ahead and try out a different GPU and see if we get a different result. All right, now I'm gonna pop in a 3060 Ti that I have modded to a ASUS power limit. So this is much higher than its stock power limit, but Again, I don't think we're gonna see a huge voltage spike with that voltage multiplier. All right, we're loaded up here with the 3060 Ti with a ASUS power limit. Let's just go ahead and pop open GPU Z real quick just to show you that it thinks that it is an ASUS card when it is very much a gigabyte card. Sub vendor ASUS. Now this card actually has a much higher power limit than the standard 3060 Ti that you get from gigabyte. So let's go ahead and see if MSI Afterburner will let me hurt this poor card. Again, just have something running in the background to give it something to be doing while you're messing with the sliders. So you're not just mindlessly messing with the sliders and it's not actually applying any of your settings because it's just sitting at idle. So we have a 135% power limit here. And again, we're running at about 1,030 millivolts. So we set it to 30, it ups it 10. We set it to 100, it ups it, doesn't even up it. Yeah, I don't even know if this, this benchmark is demanding enough. <laughs> Getting 10,000 FPS in it. Let's go ahead and try out a different game to just have running in the background. Why did I put, why did I put Shadow of the Tomb Raider on a freaking hard drive? Having it completely maxed out, the max voltage I see is 1100 millivolts, which is only, again, like 50 more millivolts than running completely stock. And I don't think that that number is big enough to justify even touching that slider in the first place. <laughs> like if your overclock is not stable at 1050 millivolts, it's not going to be any more stable at 1100. I can almost guarantee you that. All right, we have one more GP to try out because I obviously wanted to show this on both sides of the bridge, my Radeon RX 5700 XT. Again, I don't think it's gonna be a big enough difference to even be worth touching the slider, much less worrying about hurting your GPU. Like with any AMD GPU, I would almost always rather use AMD's in-house tuning software. It's almost always more stable. So there's this, but this video is about MSI and their Afterburner software, so we're not gonna to touch AMD's software. <laughs> I'm just gonna go straight up to MSI Afterburner and see just how wonky it gets with the, uh, the AMD GPU. So with the AMD GPU, you actually have a real core voltage millivolt slider up here. So let's just turn this back down, let's just reset it. Oh hey, it's already maxed. There's nothing you can do. What's nice about the AMD GPU when you're using MSI Afterburner is the numbers are real. Like they're not percentages based on like boost clocks. They're actual fixed core like speeds and volts. So you don't have to worry about, you know, tweaking it to make a percentage somewhere else, except for the power limit, obviously. But 
I think the power limit's actually, you know, pretty well sorted out too. Like even if you plus up 50%, it's it's very precise. It's not based off of boost clocks and that's very nice. So what will the AMD software let us do? Well, if you turn on all this nonsense and jazz and go down to, you, you can only, you can only get up to, wait, you can only get it up to 1200. Like, that's all you get out of the AMD software too. So it's already maxed out on the voltage side anyway. And honestly, this card can only really benefit from undervolting because it gets so freaking hot. So yeah, if you were worried about overclocking your GPU and you're worried about hurting it because we're in the massive crisis, your GPU is going to die anyway. There, I said it. I jinxed you. Overclocking it is not going to be the thing that kills it, especially when you're only putting 5% extra voltage through it when the voltage slider says 100% more. But you're not hurting anything by overclocking your GPU. Go on, get out there, get a few extra FPS, overclock your GPU, deep dive into that blue screen a few thousand times, and like always, get subscribed, leave a comment, like this video, and I'll see you tomorrow.